Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Durber with my lovely wife, Alberta Durber, and we are just delighted to be able to share with you the truths of God's Word once again. Luke 1 37 says, For God nothing shall be impossible, and it is the last day of June. Wonderful Wednesday, the 30th. This is a good month. It was a good month, but I'm really excited about this next month. But I gotta stay right here. Yeah, well, uh, how are you doing today? <laughs> I forgot what day it was. I'm doing wonderful. Amen. Well, Friday night, mm. we're going to turn the RVN band loose. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it is. It is on summertime. Yeah. Kids don't have school. Yeah. Well, it's been a long time, you know. I mean, But we're doing it an hour later at Rock Stage here at FFP. FVC uh, out back here. Yes, we so usually we'll, have food at six, but we're having food starts at seven, and then the concert starts at eight. You can yeah. still get food, but yeah. if you want to, you better get here early. No, oh, we always have more than enough food. Oh well, we always have that everybody comes with a big appetite, especially we don't know who's going to show up. And if you want to be comfortable, bring your own lawn chair. Yeah, we got those little folding chairs underneath the tent, but you you want to, uh, you know, just kick back, bring your own lawn chair. We had, that's what we did when we had the Rock Church uh, last Friday, so it was a good time. But uh, it is the last day of June, and you ready to dive down into new creation reality? I'm ready. This is good. Okay, let's do it. Okay, our scripture verse today is Romans chapter 5. You know what? I didn't have any this week. I didn't write. Any what? I didn't write any this week. It's all you. You took the week off? No, I didn't take the week off. That's how you've arranged it. <laughs> I don't know when I ever. Let's see. Do you, do you want, do you really hey, on, what's up do with you, this? Do you really on television want me to, take, you know, want me to go into the arrangement of writing this thing? <laughs> Uh, because well, my part I... was done a whole long time before yours was. Okay. June 30th. Okay, Romans chapter 5 and verse 5 says, Hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Yeah. Wow. Father God doesn't want us ashamed. His word is filled with positive solutions which give us hope in a chaotic world. Hope that makes not ashamed. The reason this hope of God makes us not ashamed is because it won't leave us in Hopeville forever. It will eventually bring us to Victory City. You know, let me say something right here. Because... A lot of people that have been beat down in life, watch yeah. this up, are, they're scared to hope again. Oh, yeah. Because they yeah. don't want to be disappointed again. And so they get to this place of just living in hopelessness. Do you remember when we were ministering to that couple that had bought the farmhouse, that young couple? Uh -huh. He was dying of AIDS, I think. Mm -hmm. And we were ministering to them, and we took them to church, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it was her mother got mad at us mm -hmm. and said, what are you doing? All you're doing is building their hopes up. Mm -hmm. Well, hello. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? And people say that all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, what are you doing? Build, you're just building their but, hopes up. But see. Without hope, you can't. You can, you can hope again. Yes. See, I was hopeless. Oh, we were hopeless. I, I was I was hopeless you as far as it. drug addiction and, and all the mess I got myself into. I had given up that I was ever going to be clean again. You yeah. didn't want to be. Neither did I. Oh, no, yeah, we did. I wanted to be. Tried. Tried to clean up. Couldn't wow. do it. I know. Addicted. I but anyways, let's go back to this. Okay. Where am I? Just read the first verse, uh, verse, paragraph. Father God doesn't want us ashamed. 
His word is filled with positive solutions, which gives us hope in a chaotic world. Hope that makes not ashamed. The reason this hope of God makes us not ashamed is because it won't leave us in Hopeville forever. It will eventually bring us to Victory City. How do we know this? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. We, Christians, should be walking constantly in an awareness of Father God's love for us. God doesn't put a little dab of love in our hearts. Rather, he opens them wide and sheds abroad or gushes in that love. Now, when Father God gushes in that love, he doesn't overwhelm us with his love for us to get a, a fuzz. I'll read that again. When Father, now, when Father God gushes in that love, he doesn't overwhelm us with his love for us to get a fuzzy feeling. You know, those people with goosebumps. No. His love goes further and makes it righteous in our hearts. Makes us righteous. Okay, I'm going to read that again. No. His love goes further and makes us righteous in our hearts. Father God doesn't want us only to know his love. He wants to change us as well and the Lord knows we need it. We have the right standing with God shed abroad in our hearts as proof of his love. The Bible teaches that if we say that we love people and, and refuse to help them, we are not really walking in love. Neither does Father God shed abroad in our hearts his love, but leave us Neither does Father God shed abroad in our hearts his love, but lead us, leave us in the same hopeless condition he found us. Father God is not a do as I say, not as I do parent. Because he loves us, he gives us hope of a life without being ashamed. His love to our heart comes simultaneously with his righteousness. So awake to righteousness and be not ashamed. Well, you know, when uh, Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they, they hid themselves because they were ashamed. You know, and, and shame is uh, something that the world tries to conquer Constant. through legal legalizing something. Yeah. For instance, abortion. That was uh, when I was a kid. That was a shame. Are right? you kidding? I grew up in now, that. Jesus. Now, now it's a so-called woman's oh, right. God. Right. So uh, the shame of it still exists. You know, it make no difference that you legalize it. You know, that, that's the thing. People, that, most people don't know the cons. They don't know what it does. Most yeah, people. Well, the, the world out there yes, yeah, has to know. deal with shame and they don't know how to deal with it. And, the only, and you can't deal with it. You can try to drink it away. You can try to drug it away. You can try to go on to the next relationship away. You can change genders. You can... Uh, <laughs> same-sex marriage, you can you can uh, do all these things, you can't get rid of shame. There's only one way you get get rid of shame, and that's become a new creation in Christ Jesus. And that kind of hope make it not a shame. Why God sheds abroad in our heart is love. That's the new birth. When that shedding abroad of God's love explodes within our dead in sin spirit, all of a sudden that love, boom, boom, exploded in our life and we are made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now I think it's in the book of Romans it talks about having the hope of righteousness. It's not talking about having the hope of righteousness 
someday I'll be made righteous when I leave this planet, die, and I go into, uh, you know, sinless heaven. No. Righteousness produces hope. The hope of righteousness is when somebody understands their righteousness, shame ah, it's that is a hope stealer is annihilated and all of a sudden somebody says you know what I can do this I failed when I was a heathen I failed when I was a sinner I failed when I didn't know I was the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus but now I now I know now I know and now now here comes hope and the love of God you can do this I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and here comes this hope it's yeah. Christ in you. Yeah, the hope of glory. Mm. The hope, and, and, and that glory there is not the hope of someday going to heaven mm. in glory land. The hope of glory is moving into an above state of existence where you are right now. Christ in you, the hope of the next level, yes. the next yes, dimension. Yes. Going from glory to glory, see? And without hope to go around the circle of faith, you're you're handcuffed. You can't you can't do nothing. Shame has you, or and 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 see when when you get involved in in shame, now you fear people finding out about what you did. Versus when you get born again, you're not ashamed of, and you get up and you tell everybody. Why wow, you're testifying. You're testifying about God's freedom because you're so far removed from the shame of that uh, past life that now you're reaching out into people that potentially might have that kind of shame, right? And giving them hope that they don't have to live their life in that shame. I'm talking to somebody. Put that camera on me. Yes. Somebody, you've been, you've been living under shame. Mm -hmm. You've been living, and I'm, I'm telling you what, uh, you can you can you can keep trying to move from one geographical yes. place to another. The shame will follow you. It'll it'll track you down. It'll find you. You can't hide from shame. The only way you can get rid of shame is you allow Jesus Christ to wash you in His blood, make you a new creation. Yes. And you say, well, I've already done that. Then you need to find out about your new creation reality that that shameful sinning person got crucified the bible says the bible says we are buried with him Jesus. we're buried with him and then we're risen with him and when that becomes real to you you're not going to have to live in that shame Come on. because you you'll go to bed with that shame it'll wake you up in the middle of the night you you'll uh, walk around uh you know Always remembering when you were a child. Oh, my. Oh, my. So many people are tormented by See? It. Jesus. And, and, and shame. God because of it. And shame. Uh, you know, the Bible says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to, to be, be ashamed. ashamed. You're right. studying to show yourself yes. approved unto yes. God. You're To show yourself. But you got to like rightly divide knows. the word of truth to exactly. do that. Right. And once you do, you will get bold in what Jesus has done. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed, I'm not ashamed of, the of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is it's the power, power of God unto salvation. See? And uh, when God sheds abroad, that love. I can I can remember when I got born again, Alberta. It was it was this love explosion, even though I didn't understand love. Of course. But when I saw you walk back in that door, we're right in the middle of divorce. I was in love with you. That's Supernaturally. Crazy. That's crazy. The love of God yeah. was shed abroad in my heart. But I still had shame. I still had, I, w I was ashamed of how I treated you. I was ashamed of how I treated other women. I was ashamed of how I treated my parents. I was ashamed of how I 
just conducted my life and so on and so forth. Just I, I was ashamed how I r- ran away from God and all that. And I thought, I thought rightfully that that shame would, came along with the package. Didn't, didn't realize, wait a minute, no, no, no. You know, the, uh, the psalmist says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Oh, that is. Right? And, and who, who, uh, for, I gotta read it. I gotta read it. all our diseases, who forgives us of all our. I gotta read it. Yeah. You ain't saying it right, I ain't saying it right. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not, not all his benefits. All his benefits mm. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life destruction. from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness tender and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with Here good things, so that your yes. youth, youth, so that your yes. youth is renewed like the eagles. And here we go. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment mm. for all that are oppressed. So you can't you can't separate shame and oppression. The yeah. devil the, the devil's the oppressor. What's he what's he use? Shame. First first he, he he tries to get you into some kind of shameful activity. Yeah. And he might surround you with peer pressure yeah. of people that have already done it, and uh, for instance, losing your virginity, right? Mm-hmm. You get around others that have already done it, and they've already uh, got their conscience Scared. to a place where it's there's no shame, and and so they shame you yeah, that Jesus. you haven't, and are trying to shame you into something they should be ashamed of. But because of the majority, because of, uh, you know, just talking about it like it's nothing, they've seared their conscience that it's not shameful. Everybody does. Oh, God. You know, I, I when before, you know, I was miraculously delivered from the abortions. And before, I mean, the shame and the guilt and, I mean, there were just... I used to say, used to say, you know, I know God forgives me, but I can't forgive myself. And that's, in a sense, that's so true. Because the, the, trying to forgive yourself, you know, when you know you did something so extremely... What, what holds you in that, in that thought process is the shame. shame. Exactly. And, you know... And but so hope, experienced but it. hope yeah. maketh not a shame. We're talking. We're talking about godly hope. Oh my God! We're not talking about worldly hope. When you Abraham, who shoot. against worldly hope, believed in godly yeah. hope, and so the hope that God brings ah. is totally different from the world's hope. Oh. Right? Jesus. Right? Yeah. So, uh, when an individual accepts Jesus as a personal Savior, and they may ha- have been involved in yeah. all kinds of shameful activities yeah. in their life, right? Mm-hmm. But yet, they got born again. Yet, the love of God was shed abroad in their heart. Now God wants to go to work. Not only have they been born again, He wants them delivered oh, God. from the shame. Because oh, the without the shame being dealt with, you, you can't hope. But when when the love of God came comes into you, there's this hope that maybe things can get better. Maybe maybe things can change. Yeah. Maybe there maybe maybe God does have a better place for me to live, a better oh. job, 
a better a better relationship. Maybe, maybe, maybe that maybe. And God will take that maybe. He'll take that that spark of hope mm, and start pouring into you into a direction. And the next Thank thing you Jesus. know, you Thank the, the you. Bible tells us that hope comes from the scriptures. And we, we now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when we start diving down into what God's word has said, after that initial shedding abroad of God's love mm -hmm. and that hope that make it not a shame, you can now launch out into what God has for you. And that, hey, have I ever, have, have I ever, uh, I, I don't want to use the word fail. Have I ever missed it? Yeah. Have I ever failed? No. No. Now let me explain that. I have stepped out thinking God told me to do something and come to find out it wasn't him in the early days especially. But I didn't I didn't throw in the towel. I said, okay. Well that, 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 that that's my mistake right there. Okay, let me get back in front of God, let me fast, let me pray, let me get back in the book and just, because it, well, God's not the problem, it's Philip Derber is. And but see, watch this, I had hope. Even after making the mistake. But see, God dealt with my shame about uh, the pornography, the masturbation, the drug addiction, the alcoholism, the womanizing, the, the being a liar and a thief and all the stuff that I was, drug dealer, all that stuff, locked up, criminal, all that. The shame of that is gone. Like uh, next week I'm going to be going to this recovery house. You know, they got a hundred guys in there and... Uh, they want me, they want to hear my testimony, right? Is well, there, any, there is no shame. No, I was just thinking that a little bit ago. There is. I have no. It's not like oh man, I got to give that. Yeah. You know, it's so what shameful and, and, and yeah. No, 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 no. Happy to. Well, the Bible says it's the testimony of Jesus is as a spirit of prophecy. So when we're given these testimonies, because we both have very strong testimonies. And when we're doing that, people are getting set free. They they get hope. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I did it for her, you know. Mm -hmm. But then there's the other side of the coin that where so many um, Christians, but we're seeing it today, so many uh, Christians don't know that power. And so, uh, you know, like that woman told me, you should have never given that that um, testimony in front of all these yeah. people. Yeah. They well, don't understand. I heard a preacher say one time, you know, uh, he said, uh, I never, I, you know, I, I got born again at a young age, got filled with the Holy Ghost, from, you know, before I was a teenager, and I never got in drugs, never got in alcohol, never got in trouble with the law. And he said, now, what's the greater testimony? That or somebody's been delivered from drugs and alcohol. There is no greater testimony. <laughs> Why are you trying to act like because you never was in something, uh, you you were gonna split hell open just like the rest of us, right? See, they don't so understand but the that. point being is, uh, he was he was projecting uh, because he had never got into that 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 was a greater testimony. Everyone's testimony is great. great. Whether the worst thing you did was steal a cookie or you're stealing from the bank, right? It's the same testimony of, of, of deliverance. It's just, it required the same blood, required the same sacrifice. And, and now understand the shame levels are different. To whom much is forgiven, the same loveth much. But the same love of God is shed abroad in our hearts and that hope that God places within us from that new creation reality maketh not a shame. And I'm just, you know, in these last few moments, that, that individual that I was talking to just a while ago 
about uh, shame, about trying to move from this place to that place, and just trying to get get away from shame. Just recognize you've been forgiven. Now study the Word of God and let God's yes. hope of the Scriptures just annihilate, blast out yes. that shame that's trying to uh, run you down. Yes, Jesus. It don't belong to you no more. No. You have been made free. Okay, our time has gotten away from wow. us again on this wonderful Wednesday, the last day of June. Sure. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm fired up. Yeah. Yes. And we got the Rock Stage concert Friday night. Friday night, 7 o'clock, free food. Yeah. Behind our church. Yeah, going to be a good time. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4 says, Where the word of a king is, there, there is power. power. Be a blessing. Awake to Righteousness with a daily devotional by Drs. Philip and Alberta Derber. In this powerful devotional, you'll learn the different aspects of the righteousness or right standing that Jesus has provided. Get the reality of what Jesus has done deep down inside of you to the point that every day you awake to righteousness. Awake to Righteousness includes 365 daily devotions accompanied by a master key verse and a scriptural meditation for every day of the year. Get your Awake to Righteousness devotional today. You can order online at our website or give us a call at 502-875-7886.